Hello student, as all you know that we are going through a crucial moment the fact of the COVID-19. So today I am here again to teach a lesson of geography for the class 8 student. And the chapter I am going to teach today is population dynamics. Or you can say population. Now what is population? Now population means, it means number of people you can say or number of any species living on earth in the area. So, you look in the board, I have written the defined population is a collection of human or a group of species living in a particular area. So, like we are living in a particular area. So, we are the population of this area. So, when we are talking about this population dynamics, means we are talking about the human population. Okay? Now, distribution of population. You know that population is not distributed equally all over the world. See, some places are having very high population, some places are having less population. Within India, if you see, if you go to the desert area, there is little less population. And if you come to the plain lands, their population is very high. So now, what is distribution of population? What do we mean by distribution of population? See, the pattern in which people are spread over the earth is known as the population distribution. Okay? So, I have given an example, North America, 5% of the total world population. Asian countries, they consist 60% of the world population. So, the population is not distributed equally. So, this pattern of distribution of population is called distribution of population. Now, to understand that better this distribution of population, we need to know about population density or density of population. Now, what is density of population or what is population density? See, it is the measure to, of number of people living in unit area of the R or people per square kilometer or meter. Means per square kilometer, how many people are living? That is called population density. Let me give an example. Population density of India is 464 person per square kilometer. Means if you go one kilometer, you will see the number of people is 464. Now we can divide the world into areas of high density, areas of medium density and areas of low density. Now areas of high density, you see eastern and the southeastern Asian countries, they have very high density of population. Whereas in the central part of USA, they are having medium density population and in the equatorial region or in the polar region, the population density is very low. So you can see that population density is not same everywhere. Now what are the reasons? Why the population density is not same everywhere? That means there is several factors for it that is affecting the distribution of population or distribution of the population density. So our next topic will be factors affecting population density or factors affecting the population. So now we will read the factors affecting the population of a place. So just before I have discussed that the population is not same everywhere or the population density is not same everywhere. So now why? What are the factors? See factors affecting the population of a place. We have divided it into two parts. One is geographical factor and another is economic and social factors. Now, under geographical factor, I will bring the climate, then soil, then water, then natural vegetation. Now, how climate is affecting? We all know we prefer to live in a place which has a suitable climate. We doesn't prefer to be when the climate is too hard. You remember that just have say low density equatorial region or the polar region, the climate is there very harsh. That's why. Population is low there. Next, soil. If the soil is fertile, 
agriculture is possible and as well the population will be also high. Next come water. Without water it is very difficult to survive. So where there is a good source of water, where there is ample supply of water, people prefer to eat in those places. Next, natural vegetation. Now natural vegetation means the trees, where there is large number of trees are there, people will be always prefer to live in those parts. So this is all about the geographical factors. Next comes the economic factors. Now how the economic factors are affected? First is mineral resources. If a place is rich in mineral, that means people can carry out mining and they will be. And that's why mineral is also a factor. Industries, large number of industries there in a place. Lots of people will work in those industries, so people will get better opportunity of job, employment, the preferable people will prefer to be in those places where there is large industries. Transport system. You see, there is no railway network, and there is no road network network. Why should I live in those places? It is very difficult for us. So, the place which is well connected with transport will leave there. Their population density will be high. But the places with poor transport network, the places will have low population density. Urbanization. Nowadays, people always prefer to live in the urban areas. Urban areas mean big cities. Because the big cities, they get better facilities of medical, education, everything. That's why they prefer to live in the urban areas and urbanization is also a factor that is affecting the population. Next, government policies. This government policies means where the government is giving good facilities to the citizen. People used to live in those places. Now, so we have discussed about the factors that are affecting the population of a place. Now I have written growth rate of population. Now population is decreasing or population is increasing. How to know about that? So that tells the growth rate of population. So we can come to know from the growth rate of population that population is increasing or decreasing. Say I have written the growth rate of population is the number of person added or subtracted from a population in a Okay, suppose this year the population is 100 million, next year the population is 200 million, that means it is increasing. Let's so give an example. In 1990, the world population was 6 billion, but in 2011, this population has increased to 7 billion because there is an increase of 1 billion population. So, that means the population is growing. Now, it may also be possible that instead of 6 billion, the population has been decreased when it can decrease due to some reason like we are going this year, like the population is, large number of people is dying due to this COVID-19, so the population may decrease the next year. So, this thing which tells us the population is increasing or the population is decreasing, that is called growth rate of population. Now, to understand the growth rate of population in a better way, we need to know several terms or several factors by which we can better understand the growth rate of population. So, our next topic is the factors for the growth rate of population. Now, we will read about the factors which affect the growth rate of population. Now, first we see birth rate or crude birth rate. Now, what is crude birth rate or birth rate? It's the measure, it's the number of live birth per thousand population in a year. So, it is measured as the number of live birth per thousand population in a given year. Life birth means number of babies those are alive. Next comes death rate or crude death rate. It's measured as the number of death per thousand population in a given year. So how many people are dying? That measurement is called death rate. 
So if we can know the bar rate and the main rate, then we can know the growth rate of population. Then so we subtract the bar rate and the main rate. Then the rate is the growth rate. Another factor that is affecting the population is migration. Now what is migration? Migration is movement of people from one place to another. Suppose I am living in Krishnagar and I have moved to Kolkata. It can the movement can be temporary or the movement can be permanent. So I am moving to Kolkata. That movement is called migration. So when anybody moves from one place to and reside in another place, that movement is called migration. So I have written see out migration and in migration. Now what is out migration? When two people leave the place, then suppose I am living in Krishna, I am leaving Krishna. Means I am out of Krishna. That is called out migration. And I am going to live in Kolkata. I am arriving in Kolkata to leave. That is called in migration. So in migration when a people arrives at place leaving another place. That is called in migration. Means I am out of Krishna and in, in Kolkata. Another two terms are written. One is immigrant and another is immigrant. So immigrant means the person who are doing out migration, they are called immigrants. And the person who are doing in migration, they are called immigrants. Okay? So this is about the factors which affect the growth rate of population. Next, we will go the composition of the population. So now we will know about this composition of the population. So to understand the composition of the population, we need to know about these compositions. First is age composition. Now we know the population is composed of different age people. Now so the population can be grouped into three main age groups: 0 to 14 years, 15 to 64 years, and 65 years and above. Now in these age groups, 0 to 14 and 65 years and above, they are called dependent population because they are not engaged in a productive work for their livelihood, they are dependent on the working population, that is the age group 15 to 64 years. Next comes sex composition or the sex ratio. Now, what is sex composition or sex ratio? It is described as the number of females per thousand males in the country. How many females are there per thousand males? For example, in India, the sex ratio is 940 females per thousand males. So it means the sex ratio is 940 to 1000. Means there is 940 males per thousand males. Next come literacy level or the literacy rate. Now it is the ability to read and write with some understanding. Because everybody in a country is not able to read and write. So, to determine this literacy rate, we have given a formula. So, the literacy rate, number of literate peak population, 7 years above by population, 7 years and above into 100. With this formula, we can calculate how many percentage of people in India are literate. Okay? Now, we will read about how the population is changing and how the population affects our economic and social development. Now, we will read about the pattern of population change. Now, if you follow the worldwide population, what we can see? You see, we have given an example. In 1820, there was 1 million wild population. In 1990, it became 6 billion. Then in 2011, it became 7 billion. And 2016, it went to 7.4 billion. So, there is a change in the population. So, the population is not fixed. The population is changing. Now, in NDCs, or we call more economic developed countries, like USA, UK, the growth of population is less. But in LDCs, means less economic developed countries like India, Bangladesh, the growth of population is high. So, next comes population growth and economic development. 
Now, how economic development is related to the population growth? When the population growth is less, high economic growth. But when the population growth is high, less economic development. Okay? Because if less people are there, it means less resource utilization, less sufficient things that will be there. But if the population is too high, you see countries like India, Bangladesh, where huge population is there, but all the people are not getting proper food, proper uh, education. So the economic growth in those places is less, or economic development is less. Okay, so this is all about the chapter population dynamics of population. So go through this and keep your studies on. So this much for today. Stay home, stay safe.